Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and today we're going to be talking about chapter 4 for subject CT5, and this one is called Evaluation of Assurance and Annuities. And this is just a little summary of what we're going to be looking into, but let's get into it um, in more depth. So, this guy. It looks tricky at first, but it actually makes a lot of sense. What we're saying here is that what is the value of a term assurance? So this is the symbol for a term assurance, and a term assurance is like a whole life um, assurance, which is represented by the blue ones. However, it has an expiry date of n years. So on the timeline I've got over here, we can see that our term assurance lives in this area. He's going to be effective from here. Now, that is the same as a whole life assurance with the same age, except for, as you can see, after time n, there's all this extra bit here. So what we simply do is we subtract another term, uh, well, another whole life assurance over here, with an adjusted age at time n. But that's not the whole story. What we then have to do is because this guy over here is sitting at time n, we have to discount him back to our time zero, where we are at the moment. So we're all familiar with vn from subject CT1, but now what we're going to be introducing, um, what we saw in subject CT4, we're now going to bring these two subjects together and we're creating almost like a new discounting factor. It's got an interest rate component and this is the mortality rate component. So this is the interest that we need to take account of and this is the probability that the person survived to this age. And that's, that's how we get, um, that's how we would calculate a term assurance. Now this is an important formula to know because of the fact that these aren't tabulated, very few of them are, but these guys are. So we can use these guys to work out these guys. And the same thing kind of works when it comes to annuities as well. A term annuity is equal to um, a whole life annuity subtracted by another whole life annuity with an adjusted age and then we adjust for force of interest and force of mortality. Uh, a very simple example is to look at the difference between a annuity in advance and annuity at the end of the term. And we can see that this guy here, which is the annuity at the end, is represented by the bottom here. Now let's say n is equal to 3, just for this example. Here's our immediate annuity, it's these guys here. You can see that the difference, it's 1 that we need to subtract. But then we need to add on this term, Vn npx, which is over here. So this would also be the number 1, discounted back by the force of interest, and discounted by the force of mortality over there. When it's continuous, you can see that we just have to make it halfway um, in order to account for that. Another interesting thing that you might see is that if the interest rate is zero, your immediate annuity is actually then becomes your complete um, life or complete life expect expectation. And this makes sense because if interest rate zero, then this VN NPX guy falls away and we just have the force of mortality, which is used to calculate life expectancy. But this V and NPX, it's quite, an ugly, it's quite an ugly value. So there is a computation function, which we call dx. And dx, is, it's got the, the V and it's got the L in. And these are tabulated in the orange book. And what's cool about these guys is that dx plus n divided by dx is equal to this pink value which we've been looking at uh, previously. And what's cool here is that dx plus n divided by dx 
removes the x's from the discounting factor which leaves us with a pure discounting factor based on the term and at the same time it generates that npx value which you'll know can be represented by lx plus n divided by lx. And yeah, finally um, I'm just going to show you some premium um, conversion formulas and this is more of from a, a literal or, or just thinking about it logically AX is equal to 1 because remember a 1 sits in front of this guy here and what you're doing so on our timeline the 1 would uh, be sitting there and AX would be sitting there and AX remember is always less than 1 because it's almost as if you're losing out on all those interest payments that you could have been getting and because you lose out on them in the beginning they're represented by the D for discount and not the I for interest so an AX is the is one less all the payments that you've missed out. Look, this form this chapter does get a little bit trickier when you start going into um, these formulas over here when your whole life annuities are paid M times a year. This is quite common to have M as 12. Um, but think it through, it's not such a big step. Um, from when it's been paid once a year and I'll let you guys um, have something to wrestle with with that but sure otherwise that is chapter 4 uh, for CT5 the evaluation of assurance and annuities thanks so much and feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe as I am in the process of making uh, chapter 5 6 7 8 and 9 videos so those will be being released soon. Thanks guys. Cheers.